Um, hi, in this demonstration I'm going to show you um, how to use uh, Intune to enroll uh, an iOS device, in this case I'm using an iPhone, um, in supervised mode um, for multi-user deployments. So I'll just briefly show you that I don't have any uh, device configuration on this, uh, this device at the moment and as you can see at the top of the screen here um, it's in supervised mode. Uh, we'll come back to the, the device in a second as I run you through um, how, how this is set up and configured. So I uh, come into Intune, I've got my uh, I, iOS devices, uh, obviously nothing's in here at the moment. And generally the way you would deploy this would be with uh, the volume program uh, or DEP. So the devices are, are um, automatically enrolled into your tenant um, and, and the credentials flow through, but um, I'm uh, not privileged enough to have a, a volume agreement with, with Apple, um, so we're going to be using um, Apple Configurator to do this. Um, so, a couple of things that are going to be slightly different to doing this on a large scale versus uh, my single user tenant, um, but um, we'll, we'll run through this. Um, so, I've got a couple of uh, a couple of configurations here. The ones that are specifically uh, interest um, is my root certificate. Um, I seem to have a typo there, so we'll ignore that. Um, I've got a profile here which um, prevents um, um, uh, or, or specifically allows the notifications from Zscaler Client Connector, um, and I've got a, a mobile configuration here um, that's going to do a bunch of things and. Uh, just to show you the Zscaler Client Connector configuration here as a payload um, and it's saying it's going to send um, the serial number as the authentication string. Um, serial number is as good as anything but it could be, uh, it could be anything. Um, and we say okay well, well here is my, uh, my uh, token, I'm at welshgeek.net, I'm going to send the serial number and I'm on Zscaler 2 Cloud. Um, and the purpose of that is to configure Zscaler Client Connector to automatically um, attempt the, the single sign-on process. Those things are, are, are relatively uh, trivial. The things that are, uh, are kind of interesting um, are that I'm going to use SCEP to generate a certificate and then I'm going to use the SSO extension um, to push that down to the device. So in my SCEP certificate, um, again because I'm in a single uh, user mode, um, I'm actually going to pass it um, my, uh, my, my username. Um, this is inherently insecure way of doing things, but um, if you, you know, because I'll end up with lots of certificates all over the place if I was enrolled in hundreds of devices, um, and they'd all think that they are me. But um, in reality, you would say um, it's my device serial as an attribute, um, and you'd use this for your, um, your common name of the, the certificate, um, the user principal name and the email address. Um, I've got a couple of uh, extended key usages here that aren't, aren't necessary. Um, and this points at my, um, my SCEP server. Um, so when this um, is pushed down to, to the device, the device gets the, the seed token for SCEP. Um, it looks at its serial number. It builds all of these, these attributes, sends them across to the SCEP server. SCEP server validates that and gives it a certificate. Um, so that's all well and good for SCEP. Um, and then what I've got here is my authenticator configuration. And I'm assigning it to all devices, but um, you would, you'd filter this stuff down. And the thing we're using here is the single sign-on app extension. So we've got two configurations here. We're saying use the SCEP certificate as the renewal certificate. So use the SCEP certificate as the seed. Um, and then we use that seed as an intra ID. Um, and I've got this in um, shared device mode. Um, and then it says here that um, these specific bundles um, are allowed to use the SSO extension um, to, to provide single sign-on. So if we come back to um, my uh, device here, just to, uh, the other thing that I wanted to show before I start the enrollment. So if I launch Authenticator here, it says, okay, I'm in shared device mode because it was configured previously, um, um, but it says the extension is not active because we haven't um, properly configured it. So 
we'll go ahead and um, we'll, we'll go to Microsoft Authenticator. Yeah, here is my um, iPhone. I got a bunch of profiles and then I will just simply drag and drop my uh, Intune configuration across to it. Um, and then whilst that's, um, whilst that's going on, we'll come across to my iPhone over here and we'll see what's um, happening with the enrollment. So I come into my general settings, VPN device management, and we'll start to see um, all of this uh, configuration um, get imported into, into this. So uh, at the moment, it's pushing that profile across. The profile is going to connect out to Intune. Uh, we see it in here and it starts off with uh, enrolling. Um, it, it gets an initial uh, SCEP certificate for enrolling in MDM um, and it gets all of the, the Intune routes and the device certificates and everything um, that basically says it's managed. Um, once it's managed, then it starts to pull down the configuration pieces. So those configuration pieces will first be the, um, the root certificate for my domain controller. Um, then it'll um, pull down the SCEP certificate or an enroll in SCEP against my, um, my domain. Um, and then it'll build out the, um, the authenticator pieces. So I, oh, sorry, I'm back here. So I can see my um, uh, root certificate for my domain. Um, I see the SCEP certificate here and we see that it's been given a common name of M. Ryan. Um, and it's got all of the um, extended key usages and everything. And there, this is where we can see the DNS name um, here is actually the serial number of the device and the email information there. I could use those attributes elsewhere. And as we scroll down, we see we've got those notification settings and the authenticator settings that say um, it can enroll um, uh, using that redirect authentication. Um, and so we see all of those settings and then we've got the Zscaler app settings. So now if we come across and we launch Authenticator, you see it doesn't present that error. It's already configured and it's designed, it's automatically signed me in with those credentials. So we can close that and then we can come across to Zscaler and uh, it'll have already uh, launched, it's logging in, uh, automatically single signs in because that um, SCEP certificate was used to, well actually what's happening is Zscaler Client Connector is using Microsoft Authenticator to do the authentication, that's the SSO extension, and Microsoft Authenticator is, um, is signed into my tenant. So now um, I've got transparent sign on into um, into all of my tenants and I can actually access my resources. Now, of course, what you would generally do if you were rolling this out in, uh, in a large scale environment, um, you clearly can't use the same certificate or the same uh, credential, M. Ryan, across, uh, across all of those, uh, those devices. What you would do is you'd have that volume program. They would send you, um, uh, or you'd use DEP and you'd get all of those serial numbers and you'd upload them. You'd have a, you'd need to be properly licensed for Azure. Now Azure will say you either need a, a license for the user or you need a license for the device. So it doesn't really matter um, in one way, shape or form, whether it's a user or device, you still need to be licensed for the access these things have. And so you have your device certificate, you have a device credential, so you'd create an account that maps to that um, certificate. So the serial number is probably a good way to go, but you could, um, you could concatenate that with the device name, device name slash serial number. So iPhone slash, here's my serial number. Um, register that as, your, um, as, a, as a credential in Azure, create the SCEP certificate, that will generate the, the SCEP certificate and you can map those two things together and then you use those, you push those out um, to all of your, uh, all of your devices. Um, they would all automatically um, enroll. Again, um, uh, Microsoft Authenticator gets that credential, it's enrolled and then uh, Zscaler uses that credential to, to sign on and you haven't got to do anything special inside of Zscaler Client Connector uh, in terms of supporting uh, certificate authentication or anything like that, which is a restriction within iOS and exposing those certificates.
So I hope that makes sense. Um, any questions, let me know. Uh, mark at zscaler.com. Thank you.